So this is a great product. Now, let's say the you're sitting down in front of the camera, your lights are on, you're getting ready to record. You've already hit record on your camera, you hit record on your audio device. The most important thing you need to do before you start your video and before you start talking to the camera, just take a second and clap your hands. It's pretty simple, right? We're going to talk about why to do that when we get to editing. But basically, what you need to do is make sure that your hands are where the camera can see them. So if your camera is on a tight close-up and you can only see your face and you clap your hands down here, that's not going to help you too much. You want to make sure that you clap your hands where the camera can see them. Any questions about audio so far? Yes, David. So can I use the phone with the purpose? Um, now there are products, so you're talking about using a Bluetooth microphone yeah. going to your phone? Yeah. There are products that do that. Um, and I suspect that in five to ten years, everybody's probably going to be doing that. But right now, in 2020, I'd say we're not there yet. There's, there's too many, there's still too many factors. You might, you might not, you might lose some of the sound frequencies you want to record. Um, your Bluetooth might cut in and out while you're talking. Um, there, you know, there's still too many factors of, of that might ruin your recording if you're using Bluetooth. Now, five, ten years from now, as the technology gets better, I'm, my guess is everyone's going to be doing it. But we're not there yet. So it's a great question, David. Any other questions about audio? Yes. Yeah. Uh, what if there are two persons? Okay. If there's talk show like uh, sure, what sure. Is set up? So that's a great question, Kevin. So what do you do when you're in different situations? Um, so this is a great product if you have one person that you're recording. Sometimes it might be a great product if you have two or three people that you're recording and you just have each person has one of these on them. However, that means you're going to have to synchronize each person's audio individually while you're editing. So if you're in a situation where you want to record three or four people, and you don't want to have to worry about synchronizing all of that audio, what you can do is you can buy some a, a, a great product um, there, and, and there's dozens of these. It's just a sound recorder that has multiple channels. So a four-channel sound recorder that I like to use is the Tascam DR... I think it's the 40D. Don't quote me on that. But yeah, the Tascam DR40 is a four-channel uh, mixer, and you can plug four microphones in it and record four separate audio files at the same time that will be synchronized. Um, there are, so there are four channel mixers. There are six channels, eight channels. Um, now, of course, the more channels you have on your recording device, the more expensive it's going to be. Um, and then you have to buy your microphones separately as well. Um, another option is how many of you guys have ever seen somebody hold a big pole that has a microphone on the end? You guys ever seen that? Mm -hmm. That's called a boom mic, and boom is actually referring to the thing you're holding, not the microphone. The microphone at the end is probably in a straight line and it looks like a giant pencil. It's called a shotgun microphone. So remember how I said there are unidirectional mics and omnidirectional mics? A shotgun mic is like a unidirectional mic on steroids. It's like a sniper. It's just pointed in one direction. It's just going to get all the sound that's in that direction. And the reason that sometimes people use that is because if you want to record the person who's talking um, and not somebody up, you know, not the noise out here that's coming from the street or an airplane flying overhead or a train going by or whatever. It's not going to pick that up. It's going to pick up the person who's talking. If you have two people who are talking, you can point it to the person who's talking and then point it to the other person when they're talking. So 
That's another option, is using a boom mic instead of a lock. So there are different ways to do it. If you're in a room that's completely quiet, you can get a room mic, a microphone that's just going to pick, you know, put it like in the middle of everyone who's talking, and it'll pick up all the sound in the room and hear everybody loud and clear. But know that if you're if living in an apartment and your neighbor who lives above you, they start blasting their music, it's going to pick that up too. Or car goes by outside, garbage truck comes by, somebody flushes the toilet, it's all going to end up getting recorded. So if you're in a setting that's completely quiet, that room mic might come in handy for you, Kevin. So uh, just so you know, there are many, many different options and many, many different types of audio setups you can do depending on what it is and you need to record. For example, just for this one, for this mm -hmm. device, if I have dog barking, and uh, it will record my dog or just myself. So if you're using the, the just room, this one, just yeah, this? Yeah. Um, well, how, how loud is your dog and how close are they to you? <laughs> <laughs> Usually it's just pretty close, yeah. Okay. Uh, it, yeah, even with this, it, it'll still hear your dog. Yeah, okay. So the thing, the, the reason it's so hard for us to record good audio is that microphones do not have a brain. That sounds kind of silly, right? I, I, I know, but let me explain. So right now, your ears are hearing hundreds of sounds that you just don't know you're hearing. You're probably hearing some sound. Actually, if I listen closely, it sounds like there's somebody playing music in another room. Um, there's the sound of this projector. There's the sound of my keys. Yeah. There's a hundred sounds just in this room alone that we're not listening to. So ever since the day you were born, your brain has been training every single day just to notice the sounds that are important and to ignore all the other sounds. There are actually some people out there who have a uh, diagnosis where they can't do that. and They just hear all the sounds all the time and it drives them crazy. And they're like a microphone. The microphone is going to hear all the sound all the time. Your brain, because your ears are connected to your brain, and your ears have to send the sound to your brain in order for you to hear it, your brain is just going to filter out all the sound you don't need to hear so that you only hear what you need. Have you ever been at a, at a party and you were talking to your friend and you could hear what they were saying? but you didn't hear what song was playing. Mm -hmm. You didn't hear the people who were standing next to you talking. You were just talking to your friend and that was all you heard. That's why. The microphone can't do that. So if you're watching, anytime you're watching a commercial or a movie, a lot of times they keep the set completely quiet so that the only sound that happens when they're recording is the sound of the actor's voice. But now let's say a dog runs by and in the commercial you need to hear a dog barking. The dog didn't bark on set. They added sound effects. They added a car door closing. They added the sound effect. Uh, the refrigerator running. The, you know, somebody pressing play on their speakers and blasting their music. Sound effect. So, um, it's, so in movies when you hear all those sound effects, most of them were not recorded when it was being shot. They were added in after the fact. So how does that affect us who are making YouTube videos and, 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 and videos for our companies and for our social media? Um, and just to keep in mind that when you want really good sound, you just have to think about what sounds are going to be in the room with you. Now, your dog barking, uh, you might have to put your dog in the other room while you're recording. or Maybe if your dog is a part of your video, maybe that's something that you want to consider. Maybe your audience wants to see and hear your dog, and that the dog is just going to be part of the video. So it's, it's something to think about. I, I, I know that was a really long explanation, but did that help to answer the question? Yeah, it does. Okay. Yeah. So I thought it can only record whatever you say, not mm -hmm. record anything else. Yes. Yeah. 
but no, I understand. And don't get frustrated because sound is hard to record. And like I said, there are a lot of people who have been doing video as long as I have who still have prob you know, trouble recording good sound. The only thing I can say is you just have to start doing it in order to become good at it. Mm -hmm. So don't be afraid of it. Don't get frustrated. Any other questions with audio before we move on? So one more thing I'm going to point out is today I brought with me a pair of headphones. And um, I, I brought the big headphones with the big cups that go around my ears to cancel out noise. And the reason I do this is so that, um, and obviously I can't wear these in my video because people think I look silly, but when I'm doing, I'll do a test run uh, before I shoot. I'll do a test recording and I want to make sure that I listen to it, it sounds good, I know that my shirt's not ruff ruffling against the microphone, I know that the microphone is picking up my voice and it sounds good, I know that I'm not hearing my dog barking in the background or my neighbor flushing their toilet. Um, I know what the sound sounds like now, and I can record with confidence. Sometimes, I'll, even after I cut, I'll go listen to it again just to make sure that um, I didn't record anything bad, especially if I heard a garbage truck go down the street or an airplane fly overhead while I was recording. I'll go back and I'll listen to it again with my big headphones um, and I'll make sure that that sound isn't in my sound recording. So, that is sound recording in a nutshell. Talking about the headphones, I mm -hmm. often see some YouTube videos. Yes. They have those headphones mm -hmm. out. What are those, what are they doing with that phone? So, so, one of the things that's very popular nowadays on YouTube is to podcast. And so a lot of times you'll see somebody who has a really big, like, uh, radio-style microphone, like a talk show, and they'll have this big microphone right in front of their face, and they'll wear their headphones, and they'll just do that for their whole YouTube video. And they might just be, um, and they might just be talking the whole time. They might be playing video games the whole time. They might be, you know, whatever but it gives the show more of a podcast feel or more of a radio talk show feel. So when you're using that big microphone, which is what you would do if you were recording a podcast or a radio talk show, it's going to record a lot more sound frequencies um, than my little itty bitty microphone here. So when you're using that big microphone, you want to listen to it the whole time you're recording to make sure that it's not picking up some noise that you didn't notice. So that's that's why. Also, because some people just like to listen to the sound of their own voices. Well, not really. Nobody likes that. But um, just really, it's, it's because you have a bigger microphone, and it's going to record more types of sound, and you want to make sure that um, you're not picking up some sound that you don't want. OK. So we're going to move on from audio. So we pretty much covered all the different elements of shooting a video. Um, now we're going to move to the next step, which is editing. So for today, I'm going to use a program called iMovie. I usually use a different program, uh, but this is, an I'm, uh, is a program that uh, comes free with a Mac. How many people use Mac here? Okay, a few people. How many people here use a PC? Most of the people in this room. Okay, so full disclaimer, the software that I use is called Adobe Premiere Pro. Um, it runs on both the Mac and the PC. However, Premiere Pro is also, it's got a little bit of a learning curve to it, which means um, I would have to spend a whole this whole class explaining how to use Premiere Pro. And if I use iMovie, I can just show it to you really quick. There are about, there are probably six or seven good editing softwares that are free for the PC uh, that are going to be similar to iMovie. Um, and if you're